Hi YouTube, Edward Tindall here and Mikey Tindall. <laughs> Camera man. We have got um two new things for Sarah. Um one the stroke, stroke book, book. A guide to life after a stroke for survivors and those who care for them. Health and happiness book. We're all about health and happiness. So I'm reading that to figure out all that I can do and they talk about it being a roller coaster ride up and down and that's really something. We got an unboxing here. We gotta keep under refrigeration. This is something special I got for her to make life a little bit easier for all of us. I would cut it open and uh tell this thing like is packed. Very good packing. This is a very rare artifact actually. Look at this. They've cut, they've cut this out to mold around this awesome device. Wow. So this, my friends, I think I already know what it is from looking at it, maybe it's something I don't know. This is... Put your butt in it. Put your butt in it. This is a bedpan. A porcelain bedpan. In mint condition. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Look at this. The clean easy. Let me uh move this up a little bit so y'all can I'm gonna zoom in on this so y'all can read this. I want the best for my wife. Look at the date on there. Hold on, I'm trying to figure out how to... August 16th, 1910. This is 110 years old today. 110 years old today. So, <clears throat> you just slide this bed pan underneath like that and that makes life easy. A lot easier. As a matter of fact, it's awesome. I guess when you just slide it in there like that. I think it's slid it like that. No, I guess it would slide like that. You can use it and then you can move it and pour it and clean easy. It's porcelain from 1910. It's got a few scratches on it. It does not have a break on it anywhere. Absolutely amazing. What do you think, son? Yeah, pretty cool. Yep. A 110 year old bedpan for my beautiful wife. That's amazing. There's probably World War II people peeing and pooping in that. And the fact that it survived all these years is something else, too. So, uh, yeah, we're waiting <clears throat> on her return now. We, uh, we had her back here, and uh, she's been in the hospital for let me see four days now right yeah. yeah four more days and what has happened is they found the brain bleed in Thomasville hospital and it was an old brain bleed when they got her to the USA medical hospital they said that it's white because it's blood that's just residual there and uh, <clears throat> that's not of concern to them but they said it's a good thing that I got the ambulance to get her because even though they did not see a neuro change and the doctors don't believe me that there was a neuro change for some reason but obviously I filmed when I was opening her eyelids and y'all could see her pupils was not uh, reacting that was a neuro change something was going on maybe a micro stroke or something they just they're overlooking but uh, <clears throat> they found a blood clot in her lower lung the size of a golf ball and they said they put her back on heparin even though me and the doctors discussed discussed that we was not going to put her on blood thinners they said they have to uh have to do it because if they don't break up that clot and get it out of there it's going to go straight to her heart and kill her instantly so, they had to so, give her the medicine. so they're taking a chance on uh, giving her the heparin to try to break up the clot and i haven't heard from her in about 20 hours and it's really aggravating on you know I've been waiting on a call but uh 
upon her return, things should uh, be a lot better. They said, as far as everything else is going, uh, she's uh, been well taken care of. They can see that I've kept up with her, bathing her, and everything else. Um, they said everything looks really good. Down in, oh, also down in her trachea, down in the bottom, she got an infection in there, so they got her on some serious antibiotics to uh, clear that up. But, uh, and she had a stroke and had to. The worst case scenario is she's going to get another brain bleed because of this clot in her lung. They moved her back up to the ninth floor. She's on, uh, <clears throat> on her, she's still breathing on her own and everything, and she's still alert right now, which is good. I just want to update y'all every step of the way. Um, thank y'all for your continued prayers. Uh, like I said in this, in this stroke handbook I'm reading, it tells about how things are just a roller coaster. Going up and going down. Right, up and down. These people, June and Barbara, they, June and Barbara, the ones who wrote this book, something would happen to one of them. They wrote several diabetic books I was reading and then based on what would happen to them. Something would happen to them. They'd do all kinds of research, medical, holistic, whatever it takes. Find out something and they'd write a book about their findings. And they wrote several books and they wrote this stroke book because um, one of them had a stroke and they said uh, they wasn't going to write a book about it but they ended up writing a book about it anyway and I'm glad they did. It's a uh, it's a different book. Tittle Health and Happiness book. Arthur's of the Diabetics. Um, it's uh, interesting. I'm going to read you all the back of this before I go so you can get a thing. An indispensable sensitive guide for stroke sufferers and those who care for them. According to the U.S. Centers uh, for Disease Control, one American suffers a stroke every 45 seconds. That's unacceptable. More than 700,000 Americans each year find themselves struggling to recover from this affliction and many hundreds of thousands more are there to help them mend. June Berman, a stroke survivor and her co-author and caregiver Barbara Tui, authors of the best-selling Diabetics Total Health and Happiness book offer the essential source for those recovering from a stroke and those providing them with support. The Stroke Book offers readers clear explanations of the science of this often misunderstood condition, information on what to expect at the hospital and rehabilitation, analysis of encouraging new developments in stroke therapy, including basic and alternative therapies and traditional and cutting-edge medications, advice on coping with complex rehabilitation needs including adjustments for nutrition, mobility, and everyday living, and on understanding after stroke emotional and con cognitive changes suggestions for preventing future strokes information on how people recover from a stroke can reclaim their independence and quality of life and how caregivers can manage their own stresses and sorrows heartening words on keeping hope alive with patience and fortitude and the curative power of humor inspiring stories of the stroke and recovery experiences of well-known individuals um, I don't know, this book is, this book is, uh, helping me a lot, really, um, it's U.S. 1595 and Canada 2395, I got it on eBay for four bucks, um, used, and it's still a good book, though, um, like that, but they wasn't kidding, this often misunderstood condition, Sarah's been complaining about headaches for the last two years, and this June, uh, Berman that had a stroke was complaining about headaches for a couple of years, and it just kept getting worse and worse and worse and worse, until it was unbearable, and the doctors kept telling her, "Oh, it's just, it's just a thing. It's just a thing." Well, it wasn't. It was signs of a future stroke, and that was what was happening with Sarah. Even uh, she posted on Facebook the day that the stroke happened. I woke up this morning with a headache so bad I can barely stand it. She woke up before I did because I was up all night dealing with spiders, and uh, the headache woke her up, and that was the last. You and Mom and Mom were here watching yep. her movie. Oh yeah, Mommy was watching a movie and I went mowing and when I came back I told her I had to go mow two more yards and she said, um, uh, it'd be better if you stay with me probably. Um, I said, you want me to not mow? She said, well, uh, I, I just want you to stay with me for a while. And I stayed with her for a while and 
we uh, we spent some really intimate time with each other, and then and then she had her stroke. Oh, this is hell, people. I'm sorry, this is a roller coaster for all of y'all, but I, uh, you or our people or our online family, y'all been with us for years and years and years, and uh, y'all need to know what's going on. How, how this how this whole story is going to unfold. I hope I hope it has a happy ending. But uh, I don't know. Things just keep getting. According to this, they get worse and they get better, and they get worse and they get better, and eventually they'll get better. So I don't know. I'm just keeping up, keeping on uh, hoping and knowing she's fighting. The nurse asked her earlier if she's going to. I told her because I can't talk to her right now. Um, I, the, the nurse I asked her to ask her, tell her her husband said that to blank once if she's going to keep on fighting and if she understands it. She said she asked her both those questions. She blank once, so she's going to keep on fighting. Hopefully, love will keep us alive. Edward Tyndall out, Mikey Tyndall out. Peace, love, and happiness. Like, subscribe, and tell your friends.